so two positions here and one, uh, I started off in the off season hitting hard was the quarterback position. Then the other one was the wide receiver position to say, you need to go out and get a quarterback. And I harped on that, of course, for a long time. And they finally did when they got Brendan Sullivan. So I, I applaud that. I think that's a great, obviously, as we both agreed, I think Kate McNamara has been injury prone. Number one, number two, Kate McNamara is not Peyton Manning. And number three, um, he may not win the quarterback spot. So why not get a quality backup quarterback that can take you to where you want to go, even if the starter gets hurt. So they've done that. So I applaud them for that. They did that. It didn't look like it was going to happen for a long, long time, but they still, uh, when I'm watching Iowa this fall, I know that there's going to be a few times when I'm like, why didn't you go to the portal and get a receiver or two or <clears throat> three? Or <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. You, you could be right. You could be right. But I, I, again, I'm going to continue to double down on my stance that I've been making for several months. I think Tim Lester is going to make this receiver room look a lot better than it ever has. And I think the expectations, even from people on the outside like yourself, the expectations for this room and the whiteouts and the passing game, the expectations are so low. Unless they just totally regress with tight end play. And I don't think I don't think that's going to happen. I think Tim's going to embrace that. I think he has embraced that. I think he realizes, you know, Kirk even brought it up last week. Kirk is really excited about Addison Estringa. And this is his third year in the program. Played a lot last year with the injuries to all and Lachey. But to have him as, you know, Luke Lachey's uh, backup or uh, his sidekick, if you will, that's a luxury. And, and Kirk's had a lot of great tight end duos, Mark, between Hawkinson and Fant and Kittle and Krieger Koble. And I mean, you go down the line, uh, Lachey and all before those guys went down last year, Laporta and Lachey. Uh, I think he's really excited about those guys. So I think the tight end play is likely to stay the same. I just think Tim is going to get more out of the guys that he's got. And he got one of his guys. I'd like to think it's one of his guys in Jacob Gill. I know that was an easy, I mean, hopefully it was a perfect trade-off, right? It was an easy trade-off because they got Sullivan. Sullivan and, and Gill were roommates at Northwestern. But he is a guy who, and, and Jacob said this, made this comment to me and has made this comment to other people in the media, that, Tim sold him on the idea that that he can be used and, and people can laugh if they want, but that he can be used similar to what Tim did with a guy like Sky Moore because they're similar in size. And Jacob Gill believes, and apparently Tim sees something there. Jacob believes that he's got some of the same skills, strengths as a guy like Sky Moore, undersized but exceptional speed. Now we've yet to see that, right? We didn't really didn't see that demonstrated much at Northwestern, but Mark, here's the other thing about North. Like everybody wants to go back to Northwestern and, and talk about how Jacob Gill didn't really do much of anything there. Have we, I, I mean, they, their receiver core has been better than I was in recent time, but when have we ever raved about Northwestern's ability to get the ball downfield to, to receivers? So I, I mean, Yes, he went from Northwestern to Iowa, but this is an Iowa team with a new coordinator and a new offense. So perhaps for the first time in how long we'll see an Iowa receiver that actually, or I should say an, an Iowa situation at Iowa that makes a receiver who transferred in from a different school actually look better. Usually it's the opposite, right? <laughs> Usually it's the opposite. Guys like Charlie Jones, Trent, now that's an extreme example, but we all know that what happened there, maybe it will be the opposite. I don't obviously expect any sort of production. They'll never get production like what we saw to Charlie Jones at Purdue. But if you can have three guys that are, you know, solid to above solid um, to complement two really strong tight ends, a veteran offensive line and running back room, I don't know how this offense doesn't get substantially better. If what Kirk said about seven offensive linemen being starter level guys, then Mark, how on earth is this offense not going to be better? Like not, not with, not even counting, taking into account the Tim Lester variable, which I think is the main thing at hand. 
But Kirk made that statement. I think it's the biggest thing to take away from media day. Seven starting offensive linemen. That's a big statement for a guy who's normally pretty, uh, well, non-bullish, right? He's sure. usually very hesitant to annoy guys. Yeah. I I think uh, I think that's the biggest takeaway. If they have that number of guys and with the depth they have at, at running back, your run game gets going even without great wide receiver production. Boy, you're you're solid everywhere you need to be. And if your offensive line is potentially that good, it's going to only help the cause for either Sullivan or McNamara. And they don't have to be great. We've seen adequate Iowa offenses in the last two decades where you had average at best quarterback play and they're at least able to move the ball, control the line of scrimmage, and perhaps this time take advantage of things like waste downs and situations that Brian Ferentz failed to take advantage of over the last seven years. So I'm excited from that standpoint to see how all these things interrelate and how they coincide with what we are told is a much better offensive line. 